Oh, if anybody is tuning in um, that I had in class in high school, you should, this should look very familiar because this is what we used to do um, for one of our projects in my clothing one class. So I'll put the link. There is a free pattern. Looks like this, you have to print it out. There is a box, a two by two box that you do have to make sure that that is the correct uh, measurement to make sure the pillow turns out. Um, you need this and you need stuffing. Now, um, we used to put rice in these when I would do it in class and then, so that is an option as well. You would need to obviously need a couple pounds. Um, and so you can, if you put rice in it, you can actually put it in the freezer and have it being a cool, cool pack or you can put in the microwave and have it be a um, heating pad as well. Um, another thing you can put in is flax seeds. I don't have enough of these. There's little seeds. I believe you can heat these up um, as well. So you need to cut two of this out on the fold. So this part's on the fold there. So cut them out and then you wanna lay them down so the right sides are touching. And it is a pillow, so we're gonna have to turn it. So on the top edge, pretty much from here to here, I don't wanna sew. Now, normally I don't take a lot of time to pin things, but on this particular project, I'm definitely gonna put some pins around here. When you are sewing curves, it's not like sewing a straight line. Um, your fabric will move when you do this. Um, so you wanna make sure that you at least have you no know, pins every, couple inches, especially around the curve. So when I get here to this um, sharper curve, I'm gonna make sure that I put um, even more pins, put them a little closer together. Again, so it doesn't move too much. Um, the other thing, because you're cutting these pieces out individually, sometimes when you put them on top of each other, if you didn't cut it out exactly the same, then one will be a little bit bigger than the other. So you just wanna make sure that you don't, they're not with, they're not over a half inch different uh, because half inch is what we're gonna be sewing at. So if one is a half of an inch or bigger, you're gonna end up with a hole. Um, the other thing is if you are beginning, if you're a beginner sewer, I would definitely recommend that you mark a half an inch, especially around the curves um, because sometimes um, when you're sewing a straight edge, you know you have the magnet or the ruler that you can go on, but sometimes when you're sewing the curved edge, it's kind of hard to tell what part you're supposed to be matching up. So that's a recommendation too. You can mark a half an inch in from the edges the whole way around. And it doesn't matter if your the balls of your pin are towards the inside or the outside. The main thing is they do need your pins do need to be perpendicular to the edge, not parallel, um, because when we we want to try and sew as close as we can to it before you got to pull it out. Um, so just double check and make sure they're not off by too much. On this side, it's off a little bit, but it's not bigger than a half an inch, so I'm not going to worry about that. It'll all be enclosed, in. and you can also um, double check it afterwards as well. So I'm gonna start here, I'm gonna back stitch, I'm gonna sew the whole way around, go to this other pin and back stitch. So a half an inch again is what we're gonna sew. So I have my needle in the left position, and so when it's in the left position and it's the fabric's lined up with the edge of the presser foot, that's a half an inch for me. Also, uh, make sure that your stitch length is a regular stitch length. If it's too big, um, you can get holes in it. Okay, so I'm gonna back stitch. And it's a good idea when you're sewing a curve, especially if you're a beginner, to go a little bit on the slower side. Um, because too, like this part's not that bad because it's not curved too much. But when you get to the bottom curves and the inner curve, um, sometimes that going too fast can make you go crooked. Now, if at any point you do go crooked, what I used to tell my students when I would teach this is if you go crooked at all, I would just keep sewing. Try and gradually get back to the measurement you want. Um, just keep sewing and then you can go back and if any part looks really um, bad, because this is basic, this is making the shape of your pillow. If there are any places, places where you went really crooked, you can go back and just fix that spot. But sometimes it can be frustrating if you keep stopping 
um, to fix it. So if you just try your best to go the whole way around and then check it afterwards to make sure all your stitching is good and then go back and fix it, I think you'll be, it'll be a little less frustrating for you. So again, I'm just kind of, I'm guiding it through. And it is nice when you have the edge of the presser foot as your guide, because then you're, I'm just making sure that not a lot of fabric is showing to the side. And when you do a pillow, it is best to have the opening on the um, straightest side that you can find. So that's why we're, um, our opening is at the top. So that's the straightest edge. And again, I don't want to sew over my pins. I want to take them out before I hit it. And this is actually a really good project to practice your curve stitching because um, it's not too drastic, but it does give you a chance to work on trying to sew curves and sew them smoothly. I'm using a flannel. Um, a cotton would be fine for this, and when I used to do it in class, we would use fleece. Um, the only thing you have to be careful about if, is if you are using this as a heating pad. So if you put the rice or the um, rice or flaxseed in it, you have to make sure you pick a fabric that's not going to melt in the microwave. You only heat it up for about a minute and a half, um, but uh, funny story. Um, this was years ago. I had a student who asked, after they finished making them, I let them, you know, heat them up if they wanted to. And so I had a student ask if he could heat his up in the microwave, and I said yes. Well, all of a sudden in the room, we noticed some smoke was coming out of the microwave. I, I honestly have no idea what he set the, the time on, but the um, fleece fabric actually ended up melting, and the smell was worse than burnt popcorn. It actually burnt and melted the fabric. It burnt the rice that was in it. Um, it was disgusting. And it took a little while for that smell to get out of the room. It was so gross. Um, but you live and you learn. So you do have to be careful um, if you are going to be using it as a heating pad that you buy a fabric or use a fabric that can withstand the microwave. And actually, some of you have probably been seeing some stories about people putting masks in the microwave to disinfect them and the same thing was happening so you do have to make sure that the fabric content can be heated okay so i'm going to back stitch at the end and take it out so you just want to make sure that your your stitching looks good so my my stitching looks good turn it around and make sure you have no holes so even though my fabrics were off here i'm on both fabrics so that's fine so the next thing we have to do is we have to do some clipping and some notching. So when you um, sew curves and corners, you have to clip and you have to notch. So when you have an inside edge like this one, an inside curve, you've got to clip it so that when you flip it, it will sit nicely. So if I don't clip this and I try to turn this, this is going to look really bad. It's not going to sit very nice. So what I'm going to do is take my scissors and I'm gonna only put them on the fabric so my point is gonna be not past my stitching. If you do this too much, if let's say you have the scissors like this and then you cut too much, you can end up having a hole in it. So you have to be careful, although the beginning of these parts aren't that great. So you need to, about every half of an inch, cut clips into this inner curve. And again, be careful not to cut your stitches. If you do cut your stitches, what you have to do is you have to go back and sew um, in a little further than, than the amount you cut. So your pillow can end up being a lot smaller. So when this turns, these are actually gonna separate from each other. And you only have to do it where it's curved. Okay, so that should be about good there. Now the second thing you have to do is something called notching. And notching is when the curve is on the outside like this. So when we turn this, all this fabric is gonna end up being on the inside. And when that happens, it can end up looking really bunchy because there's so much fabric being shoved into a small spot. 
So we actually need to remove nachos or nachos, <laughs> notches out of this edge. And the reason why I just said nachos is because what I used to um, tell the students to remember the difference between clipping and nachos is if you think Notching. of a chair. <laughs> Notching. Um, if you think of clipping like a chip on its side, um, you're just cutting a slip. And then notch, notches, if you think of nachos or Doritos that are triangular shaped, that'll help you remember it. So what I'm going to do is just start again where it's curved and I'm going to cut some triangles out of here. And this is just going to remove some of the excess fabric. And again, you need to make sure that you are not cutting through your fabric. The other thing is these notches don't have to, have to actually be touching each other. You can leave a little bit of space between them. And this is kind of awkward the way I'm cutting here, but I want you to be able to see. So you can have a little bit of fabric in between the notches. And again, if you don't go close enough, um, you may have to go back and fix it. So when we used to do this in class, I would sometimes have students mark like where they were going to cut just to make sure they didn't cut too much. Um, same thing with pinning. The funny thing is when, when some students would pin around the curved edge, they'd put so many pins in there and that really slows you down because you have to keep taking them out. So you don't need too many, but you definitely need more on the curve. So if you can see, I'm removing fabric. And again, this is going to help um, so it's not so bulky. Um, sometimes too, when you, if you've noticed, I cut and then just pull it out a little bit. What are you doing? Hello. Okay, and you only have to do this where the curve is. So I would say one or two or more on this side. And again, if you accidentally cut your stitches, you just have to go back and sew in a little further on the spot that you accidentally cut too far okay so that looks good there I don't really need to do that part so now I'm going to do the same thing on this other side but I'm going to put them on my lap so it, it's a little easier and again if you have super sharp shears um, it does help because you can use the tip of them my, these are Kai scissors K-A-I they're awesome but I've had them for a while and they're starting to get a little bit um, dull. So I either need to take them to get sharpened or get some new ones. Um, they're super lightweight. So I used to use some um, gingers. Are they gingers? Or fiskers, I mean. Um, super heavy handles. So I have gray ones and black ones. These are really heavy when you're cutting a lot, your wrist can um, start to hurt. So I bought, so the Kai's are a lot um, easier on your wrist. They have a guard on them, which is nice. And I did buy ones for wovens and ones for knit. So I have a pink, pink set and then a purple one. The purple one I believe is for the knits. So the blade is a little bit different on them. But I, I love my Kai scissors. I think I bought, it was a pack and it was, I don't know, 20% off or something. So they are a little bit pricey, but again, your wrist will thank you if you're doing a lot of sewing. And I'm just trying to be super careful. This is not the ideal um, cutting situation, um, but I'm just trying to make sure that I don't accidentally cut through my stitches. I was thinking about giving this pillow away, but then it's going to end up costing me quite a bit to send it. So the only option would be to send it to you unstuffed for it to be cheaper. Okay, so I think one more Cut here should be good. Yep, oh, and I cut through it, of course, on my last one. Okay, so I cut a teeny tiny bit too much there. So I gotta go back 
and sew in a little further at that part just so I don't end up having oops having an um a hole so careful last step then gradually just go back I'm gonna have to go back to this part because I started in not at the right spot Okay, so I just fixed that there. I just sewed in a little further. Um, it shouldn't sh change the shape of the pillow too much. Okay, once you get that done, you want to take your pillow and turn it right side out. So this flannel is super soft. Who knows at this point with all the travel plans being postponed, when we'll ever be able to use it. But we'll have it when we do. I guess we can put put in the car. Okay, so when you do this, you just want to go around the edges and just use your hand to bring the seam out to the end. And again, I'm doing this for a couple reasons. One, I'm trying to just make sure and just double check that I don't accidentally have any holes that I might have missed. And so you can see this is um, the part where I notched and it, it's it's sitting pretty flat and then this is the part that I clipped so if I were to turn this first this would be all bunched up without if I turned it without clipping it okay that part looks good and now it's time to stuff when you stuff pillows you want to do little pieces and um, if you're doing rice or flax seeds I would do one side of the pillow so that they fall down in do the other side of the pillow so they fall down in and then fill in the top um, you want it filled enough because the stuffing does go a little flat after a while so you want it stuffed enough that if it goes a little flat it'll still work good um, but not too much that you're not going to be able to hand sew your opening shut without it looking weird you mom said that she uses her neck pillow all the time, but they're not as nice as this one. Who, who said that? Mima. Oh. Yeah, and actually, I bought quite a few um, neck pillows. I think a couple years ago, I made these for um, Christmas presents for the family members. I don't know if any family members are on here that I made them for. And I think I made Peepaw a big one that could be heated up. Okay, so again, just break your stuffing up and I'm going to fill in one side and then turn around and go to the other. So when you push the, um, the stuffing in, it should make sure that the, it should give you a nice shape to your pillow. And the shape again is determined by how you sewed it. Okay, so I pretty much got the one side stuffed. I may come back and put a little bit more in there. So I'm just gonna turn it around and I'm gonna start stuffing the other side. So the best thing is, is once you put it in, especially when you're trying to get in corners and stuff like that, I'm gonna make sure I'm going in all the way and pushing the stuffing in. Once we get both sides filled in pretty good, then we're going to fill in this center part. And just be careful you don't tug too much on the opening because you can end up ripping your fabric. Um, it's important to get the stuffing in good where um, the pillow would end up bending which is here and here. So if we stuff it good enough, it'll prevent it from bending too much. And I'm gonna 
make sure when I go and I'm doing the top that I get these parts filled in pretty good. The pillow is only going to look as good as um, the stuffing that you put in. So you do need to make sure that you fill it so it is the actual shape that you want it. So I'm almost done. Um, piece of advice too, if you are going to be filling these with rice or flax seeds, it's a good idea to um, basically put it in a, put the rice or the um, flax seeds into a gallon size baggie and then cut the corner out the same way that you would do an icing bag. Um, and then that way you can pour it in um, or just cut the tip off of the corner of the bag. Sometimes we'd use a ton, uh, funnel as well. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good for the stuffing part. I think anymore it's going to be hard to actually sew the opening shut because we do want this to come together. So we need to sew the last part by hand. So for this part here, you want to use a thread color that's close to your pillow color. Otherwise, um, if you're messy with your sewing, it's going to be pretty obvious. You don't need a really long thread because it's not a huge opening. I think this is about three and a half inches or so. Shoot. Do you see the needle? I just dropped it. <laughs> So there it is. Can you get it? Okay. So when I um, am hand sewing, sometimes I'll just do a single thread. When I'm doing something like this, I do want it to be strong and secure. So I am going to do a double thread. Um, there is a downside to the double thread, and that's if you make a mistake. You have to cut it um, and knot it and then start a new one. So if you are beginning, it might be a good idea um, to use a single thread. So I just bring the ends of the thread together and then I tie a triple knot. So I go through the hole once or loop, go through the loop a second time and then go through the loop a third time. And then it will give me a triple knot all on top of itself, which will be nice and big and won't pull, pull through. Okay, so now when I hand sew this, this is going to be like a ladder, slitch or ladder stitch or slip stitch. So I'm going to come in through my opening and I'm going to come back here until I'm a little bit before where my machine stitching ended. Just because I want to overlap that a little bit so that I don't have a hole. And I'm going to do stitches that are about a fourth of an inch. So I'm going to go across the seam here. And then once I get to this part, I'm going to go across the opening and I'm going to try and stay on the fold. Okay, so I'm going to go here. You can kind of see where the fabric is folded. And then when you pull it, it'll start closing. So it's like a ladder because you're going across in the fold. And I'm going to go across the opening. And I'm going to leave it loose for a minute so everybody can see what it looks like. And then I'll just pull it shut. Um, if you've ever gone to, um, what's that store where they make the stuffed animals? Mm -hmm. Build-A-Bear. Oh. Um, this is actually what the, the thread looks like in the back. And so it's pretty much done like this. And then they just pull it and tie it. So it's it's the same same thing. So I'm just trying to make sure that my stitches are consistent and even. And if you were doing rice or flax seeds, you want to make sure that these stitches are really close together because you don't want rice or flax seeds coming out. The flax seeds are pretty small. Um, so sometimes I would tell students if their hand sewing was not very tight, um, I would tell them once they sewed across to go back um, and so the other direction just for some reinforcement there. But because this pilling pillow just has some stuffing in it, 
Um, it doesn't have to be super small. So I think it's easier to show you when the when you can actually see the stitches going across there, and then I'll show you how you'll um, pull it. Okay, so I'm getting close to the end, so I'm going to make sure everything is matching up. So you're just going to go back to the beginning, and you're going to pull. Skip a couple, pull, and if you can see that, it looks nice and secure. Come down here and pull some more. And that just brings that back together. I may go back because I feel like some of my stitches are a little bit big. As in far apart from each other, so it might feel like I might need some more security there. And also, I have a little pucker down here at the end. So it's the one thing, if you do it big like that, you can actually check if you're going straight across. So I have a little pucker here, which is causing a pucker down here. So once I get back to the other side, where the stitching is actually done, I'm going to pull my stitches, and then I'm going to turn around and go back. And again, I'm doing that just to reinforce so I don't have a hole. And once this is done, you can put this in the um, washing machine and everything. So now I'm just going to go back. And again, this will look secure. So if you pick a thread that's close to the color thread, I mean color fabric you have, um, it won't... It, won't be super noticeable but if I use black thread on this it would be pretty obvious if I made any mistakes and when I'm going back um, I'm actually trying to go in between my other stitches to close some of those gaps that are in there um, if you really don't want to hand sew you can machine sew this, I'm sure everybody has pillows at their house that are machine sewn. I'm um, closing up the hole. Um, I mean, it's up to you. It's just that, that that sewing is not invisible like this one. Um, so somebody would see it. And sometimes it's hard when you have a stuffed pillow um, to get it looking, you know, nice and neat. So this was a really big stitch here. So I'm trying to... Um, go in the middle of it to close that gap a little bit. So again, if I was doing this without trying to show you, I would have pulled the folds together so that I could make sure I was going straight across. Couple more stitches. So I'm almost back to my beginning. So then I'm going to show you how to knot it and how to secure your thread so that you don't have um, the tail hanging off the end. Just wanted to give a shout out to my photographer helper here today, my videographer, Braylon. Kevin's off painting today. So she's helping me and she's doing a good job. I love that the whole family gets involved. This has definitely been the highlight of most of our days. I'm teaching these lessons. We have something to look forward to. And I definitely get more live interaction on these than I do for my regular teaching, so it's helpful. Okay, so now I'm back to the beginning. So what I'm going to do is find a stitch that I'm close to. So I see a stitch right here. So I'm going to go in and then try and come out right 
next to that stitch. So that's the stitch that I'm going to knot around. So I'm going to go under that stitch. I'm going to take my thread around my needle a couple times and I'm going to pull it. That's going to give me a knot. Now I don't want to just cut it because then you would see it. So I'm going to take my needle and go into the fabric right next to where the knot is and just pull it out wherever, it doesn't matter where. And when you pull that, now your knot is in there. Sometimes too you can pull it so your knot actually goes down in. And now I'll just pull it a little bit more, cut my thread, and now I have no tail hanging off. So that is our travel neck pillow. So nice and fluffy. Um, so I hope you have a good day. I'll share the link that um, has a tutorial and also has the pattern on it. It's free. Free is always good. Um, and if you make a neck pillow, make sure you share your picture. Have a good day.